What is going on, YouTube? It's your boy, Spanko, and today I'm here with the boy, Richard, um, who we, we, we're at the Toronto Regional. Um, we also have Alpha here. Hi, guys. Um, and uh, first of all, Richard, congratulations. Thank I you. never thought this would be possible, but uh, you proved us wrong. Generator. Uh, yep. You topped with Generator at the Toronto Regional. What was it? Like, almost 400 players here today. Bro, damn, congratulations. <laughs> How do you? I didn't think it was possible. Fun fact, just before we get into this profile, uh, we made Richard lunch today, and uh, we forbid him from eating until he hit uh, top 16 tables. I was 5-1, table 10, and I proceeded to lose the next two cups. Yeah, we may have jinxed it. We may have jinxed it. Um, but yeah, go ahead, Richard. Congratulations on your top. Let's get right into the profile. All right, uh, so for the main deck, uh, for the main deck monsters, three Vala. It's the best, okay, it's one of the better names that you have. Uh, basically, it's in hand or grave. You can pitch another generator card to special it, and then when it's special, you can special one from your hand or grave. It's important that you can also pitch monsters, but also the spell and traps. So if you have redundancy on those, it's also very helpful there. Um, I'll be honest, this card's just busted. <laughs> it's just good. It fixes also you having to play multiple names if you draw them, because you can always just summon this out and then just summon it from your hand. So you'll be, you're always fine. Okay. Uh, then we also have the second, another one of the the better names uh lopter he's our only normal like he's our only normal summonable generator name so he's very important there he's basically a quick effect lone fire for the entire deck so there's no reason not to max out on him randomly also he does have an attack pump effect so all your generators gain that like 1k on your opponent's turn so this plus a new card which drops all of your opponent's things by 1k your opponent sometimes might just run into things that they don't realize they can't run into so it's good there too, yeah. Okay. And then for the other names, I play one Hella, one Mardell, one Nidhogg, one Har, and one Udgarda. Um, I'm only playing one of all the other these names because they kind of just suck to draw. I won't lie, like these cards are just the worst cards to draw because you can't get them out of their, your hand by themselves. So I kind of just want to minimize it as well. So. This one is just a fourth copy of Vala. It's just a quick effect reborn. Uh, this one's your Rota. This one is an inherent summon negator. That's that's about as like as good of a like uh, analogy as I can give him. He's also very important because he's the only generator that is a disrupt with one tribute. So being able to just bring him out by himself is a disrupt by itself. One Har. He's just the most insane oh, guy. The car in the is so good. Omni negate, hand or field rip. It's insane. Uh, Funny enough, because it makes your opponent like send them, it also outs like towers monsters. Um, funny enough, I had uh, I had to play against a uh, fur hire runic sprite, and he I didn't I forgot that they could make um scareclaw tryheart, which is like anything in defense doesn't like affect it. So eventually, I just made him draw cards and like cycle cards until he had to send the tryheart due to Har's effect. So because it, it affects a player, right? Yes, yes. Okay. So it's just insane, and then one Agarda, it's just a quick effect banish. Uh, that's it for the generator names. Uh, because all your best cards are fairies, uh, we can play a small fairy package. So I played three Diviner, two Trees Hierarchia, and then one DD Sprite. Oh, Lord. So can you explain to us the top three cards yeah. while you're running these? Oh, these ones? Yeah. Because I'm sure Diviner, it can send anything in your deck almost, which is all the important ones yeah. at least. Could you explain the top three? Um, so these are... This one is like a pseudo lance where it lets you push through interaction. And this is just here because it, it makes Barone. I'll be honest, it's just a level one tuner. It's like, oh, these are all level one. Ah, it makes sense. Yeah. Could you uh, just run us through the line real quick? Yeah, yeah. So you can normal summon Diviner and then you can Foolish a Fairy. So you Foolish Trius. Trius has a quick effect from hand or grave. You can tribute any number of fairies on your field to do things. So you can just tribute the Diviner to summon itself out. Because Diviner was tributed, it has an effect where it can summon a level 2 or lower fairy from your deck <laughs> that <laughs> dry John can't use, so like everyone kind of forgets it. I'm like a lot of times I'll do it and people are like, it does that? So you summon DD Sprite and surprise, you have a 9 and a sync, uh, level 1 tuner. What does that make? Baron! Yeah, Baron de Fleur. Wow, so good. Wait, Diviner is one card combo in this deck? Yeah, Diviner is both engine and protection for your engine. So it's just insane. That's crazy. And drawing Diviner Trius is just an FTK. Okay. I literally had an opponent in from this. I Trius it and they're like, okay, the game's, the game's the done. Game's done. Point. 
it basically adds like a max change sort of situation for all your fairies, right? Yeah, especially for like Vala, because the only way they can interact with Vala is like an Imperm or like a Valor, right? We're, we're gonna ignore Gamma, okay? <laughs> but <laughs> generally it's like Imperm, Valor, or like even a Chi Shao, right? Being able to like tribute this guarantees that you can stick two nines and the rank nine XE spool is just has the most insane removal in the game. So being able to just do that going first or second is just broken. Um, I'm already impressed. Uh, then, since we have a lot of non engine slots, why don't we just cram a million hand traps? So, uh, three Ash, three Nib, uh, the Gamma package, and three Imperm. I mean, you can adjust these cards to however you see fit, but this is just what I brought. I mean, Gamma was really good all day. Just gambling, like, Moye <laughs> gambling. Uh, I think I gammed a Barone. I gammed. I gammed like a bunch of cash monsters. I gammed an Ash on my Lopter. Oh. Which was you, kind of the end of the game at that point. But yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean, I th you can adjust it however you see fit. Uh, that's it. Uh, for spells, uh, three boss stage. This card's just insane. Uh, whenever your opponent adds a card from their deck to their hand, on either player's turn, and it also counts them drawing for a turn, you just spawn a boss for free, and if you summon a boss on the opponent's turn, uh, you just spawn tokens. Funny enough, the summon effect like from deck isn't once per turn, it's a soft once per turn, so if you actually have multiple copies, I've done it where like, I'll boss stage, uh, draw phase, and then end phase, I'll activate another one with uh, the trap boss fight, and then I'll get another summon for like more follow-up, right? So it, the card's just insane, and also, Boss stage spawning Har with like three or four hand traps in hand is pretty much the game over because this thing is just keeps spawning guys. So you just have an insane grind game. Because a lot of times I've had people like, they'll remove my Har and then I'll just bring it back and just sit there like, damn, I have to out this guy again. <laughs> so it's just insane. And then one terraforming. Um, but the yeah. class. Yeah. Broken field spell. <laughs> uh, I also played uh, three monstrosity. Uh, this is just Italian crack. Uh, it, summon, it can summon your 9s from hand, which is also nice, but it also summons... You can target a 9 and then summon one with different names and a different type and attribute from the one you target. So you get some really insane boards where like you can hand rip your opponent or just stick multiple rank nine, like and stick multiple rank 9s on the field. But you can also use this as like a really good disruption piece uh, with boss stage because you can summon boss stage, uh, use, uh, use your guy, and then usually it'll attribute one or two tokens. So then you can monstrosity target your boss on the field that's already spent effect and summon two more with interaction effects. And it's just insane. Last spells, three pot. Um, yeah, of course. Don't worry about that. Uh, if you can play it, you play it. So yeah, nothing to say there. And then the last trap I mentioned, one boss fight. Okay. Uh, Is this 40 cards? 41. 41. Okay. So. Let's go to this extra deck. Extra deck, uh, one Entus. You're playing Diviner, and then you're playing another card in the extra deck that can also foolish this, so you might as well. Uh, one Donner. Um, sometimes you have to get rid of your really big nib token <laughs> because um, Levitin can't attach them, attach it, so you need to make Donner to out it. But also it helps uh, you when you're like trying to remove... Um, you, need, you can't have uh, your one gunner on the field when you if you like to resolve another Levitin because you're going to control one of each boss, right? So sometimes you just need a way to get rid of it, and this is just an easy way to get rid of it. So uh, one Omega, Gamma package, Gamma package, yeah. Uh, two Barone. Wow, a budget deck is not budget uh, anymore. Technically, you could play one <laughs> and like swap it for a Changing, but. Changing honestly never comes up, and you might as well just play two, so you can always have access to this, even if cash rips. Because funny enough, Diviner triggers when it's banished, so... Because uh, it just states it has to be... Tributed? Yes, yeah, so I'm making sure, so I'm not cheating. <laughs> yeah, it just, just has to stay with tribute. It doesn't matter if it goes to the grave or not. So just always having access to Barone is just nice. Uh, and then for rank nines, I play... One Earth Slicer. This guy's just a pop too, and he can if you run something over, he attaches. So he's just really good removal. Uh, one Fortress for the going first combos you can do. So you can like hand rip your opponent before you start playing, which is really nice. Uh, one Aggregator. This is the other card that can also foolish uh, Entus when you only need to remove one. Uh, funny enough, this thing's also a punishment target. 
So it just makes one of the most annoying Zeus's known to man because it can also reattach the Entis once you dump it. So it's yeah, it's really it's it's nice. It's just a removal option. The rank nine pool is pretty big. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, where's my VFD? Um, okay, one. no VFD, but this is still pretty good. Yeah, uh, one hard earth. Um, this technically only comes up for like the hard control decks like Labyrinth because generally their only way to out monsters is through like Lava Golem or Sphere Mode. So if I just summon this and don't use my uh, boss stage effect, he just stands there menacingly. Because basically during end phase, he just banishes everything that was set normal or special. So Labyrinth can't like, they don't have a way to play on turn zero, right? So they can't ever like, get set up because I can just remove everything with harder. Yep. Also, this thing randomly just makes your opponent take any battle damage you would with this card battling. So in theory, you can just ram this into a really big nid token and kill your opponent, which is funny, but yes. I, I never did it. But uh, And then for the generator rank nines, you play two Jormungandr. George. George. Um, I mean, yeah, he's good. He cycles. He trigger. He lets you trigger boss stage on your own turn and trigger horror on your own turn by forcing your opponent to draw. So it, this card is just really good for that. Uh, I mean, it also helps you make really big Zeus's. So yeah, I mean, you have to play two because you need to summon it off of a Leviton to resolve her effect. This card's just busted. Uh, non-targeting, non-destructive interaction with your opponent's field or graveyard. As a quick effect, that tributes itself as cost, so it dodges Imperm. I summoned this into a branded player uh, last round. So he had Inred and Rinbrum. So I summon this, they chain Inred, I chain Leviton, and then they chain Rinbrum. So then they bring out Albaz, and then I, on resolution of this effect, I just take the Inred target, and I just take the Albaz to make it a George. And he just realizes like, oh wait, there goes all my interaction. That's really, that card's kind of insane. This card's just busted. It also randomly just lowers your opponent's attack by a thousand. So you could randomly just ram into things that this thing has no business running into. So it's really nice. And then finally, two Zeus. Uh, format tax. Format tax. Very good. All right, I see this top card in your in your side deck. I have no idea what it is. Can All you right. explain it? All right, so for side, I played one Consecrated Light. All you Edison players know what this card is. But for those who don't know, it's basically neither of us, neither player can summon darks. Like, you can't even, you can't normal them, like... Wait, oh wait, are you playing this because you can summon off Diviner? Yep. So oh. As soon as DD Sprite, I assume you'd be bringing yep. this out. Yeah, because uh, sometimes I'll just leave a Diviner on the field, like when I'm playing into like a Dark deck, because I'll play around Dark Ruler that way, because if they Ruler my... Because I can summon Har first, and then I contribute to summon this. So my, uh... This, the Concentrate Light has protection, right? But... The other thing is, this just ruins certain decks, like... If you can play a Floodgate, you might as well play a searchable in-engine Floodgate, right? So, it's really good. Uh, three Ghost Spell. This is for like Runic, Math Mech, and like... It's actually just really good explosion. right now in general. It was okay for me. Like, I drew it once into like Runic Fur Hire, and it was like okay, but it didn't matter because he drew like nine cards anyway. So I'm like, I wasn't winning that game. Yeah. So it's like, it was okay. Would I cut it? Probably not because I didn't play any Math Mech today and like... You kind of don't want to get your fade ran by a super fact. Yeah. So you kind of have to play it. Uh, format tax of droll. <laughs> Again, the card was like lukewarm. It was okay against a cash, right? But like, it wasn't like insane. Insane. It wasn't like I was playing into like Dark World or something where like it just ends the turn. So I mean, I feel like you still have to play it, especially going to next format. But yeah. Uh, three ruler. This was for Sprite and Naturia Beast. So, I mean, I didn't play against uh, Sprite. I played one Sprite and then it really didn't matter. And then I played one Runic Nat and he didn't make Nappy. So it was, it was okay. I think, I think you still play it. Uh, and then two Cosmic for back or hate. Back or hate's back or hate. You kind of need it. So for Runic. So I think, yeah, you, you could just, yeah, just keep playing it. Uh, and then for going first cards, I played two Judgment and a Pointer. The side deck's really tight, and I don't know exactly what to cut. Like, I don't want to cut any of, like, the higher impact hand traps for, like, more going first cards, because, like, hand traps are already good enough going first. So, I think I just keep it at this. A pointer's basically third judgment, like, 90% of the time. I guess the only case is that if they cosmic your um, boss stage, it doesn't do anything. But um, just having perfect hand knowledge is just insane, right? Yeah, yeah that's fair. And that's it for the list.
Uh, I'm, I'm just going to say it right up front. Um, congratulations, bro. I didn't think Generator could top in today's format. <laughs> I was I, I thought this deck was cool, but um, I like your list. Off the gun, anything? Because I, I, just, okay, I don't, well, man. Everyone, I, I'm going to ask the big question that everyone's really wondering. Uh, Dino Boy, where are the dinosaur cards? Where's Ovi Raptor? Where's Misk? Uh, they're in a deck box at home. All right, let's go eat, guys. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Shout outs to Mateo for basically making the entire engine. I can't hear the shout out. I, I, I actually can't hear it either. Oh my god. Uh, uh, all right. You won't mind. No. Bye. <laughs>